And today we're going to work on George and Norma, and I'll show you how the liquify tool works. So George, you're going to need to open him up in photop.com. The easiest way to do that is click on George, wait for him to fully load so that he's completely open in your browser and that there's no more spinning wheel up here in the top. And then you can say open with. Photop. Now, if you have not yet connected photop.com, you need to connect more apps first. And then in that window that pops up, you can search for photop.com and you can connect it. Once connected, you will have to wait for things to fully load. If you don't fully load things, photop won't show up in this list. Generally, then you'll have to go back out, refresh so that you can get photop to open. So George is going to open here in photop. Just takes a second. So a few steps here, we're going to first duplicate our background. You can right click on it or you can drag it to your new layer button just like you would in Photoshop. And we're going to go into the liquify tool. So under filter is where you will find liquify. Now it zooms in on it, but you can zoom out if you need to by holding down your alt key and using your scroll wheel on your mouse. So we're going to work on his uh, neck and we're going to pull up some of this skin on his neck so it's not quite so loose. Uh, when you have someone who is old like this, of course, the skin falls downwards and we just want to improve it. Now, we're not going to turn George into a 20 year old. That would be pretty fake, but we do want to make small adjustments. So these are the kinds of things that you would certainly see in the fashion industry. Uh, you would see it in magazines. It's being done in the media all the time. This top tool is the one that we are going to use in order to liquefy. This is kind of an undo tool, so we will use that one as well. Uh, if you make a mistake, you can use that and it'll undo what you've done. So that top tool that is there called the smudge tool, now it works on brush size. So you can use your square bracket keys to make your brush bigger and smaller, or you can go over onto the size of the brush on the right hand side of that window. And what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to start down on on his neck. So that uh, jowl that you see there that's hanging down, uh, your brush needs to be big enough so that it uh, fits inside of it, the skin that we want to move. And you put the skin right in the very center. So notice how my skin is in the center of my uh, mouse cursor, I guess, my brush size. And I'm going to press down and just bring it up ever so slightly. So you always start at the bottom and you pull up because that's the way that we want the skin to move. I'm going to come across a little bit and I'm going to pull up and come across a little bit and I'm going to pull up. And so you're going to do this uh, just on the sides. You can do it a little bit on this little piece of skin that's here as well. And just pull these up. Okay. Now, if your brush is too small, you're going to get awfully uh, ripply looking kinds of lines. So that'll be a hint to you that your brush is too small. Let's also fix, it, fix uh, his eye. So you'll notice that this uh, eye that we see on the right, his left eye, is closed quite a bit compared to this other one. So what we'll do is we will close this one a little bit just so they match a little bit closer. I can have a little bit smaller a brush now because I don't want to use his, uh, to touch his eyeball at all. I just want to touch his skin. I'm going to just grab that little piece of skin and I'm just going to bring it down to close his eye up a little bit. Bring this here, bring it down. And I can probably take this bottom piece and just bring it up and just bring it up and just bring it up ever so slightly. Notice I'm not moving it very far. I'm just bringing it little bits and pieces to bring that up. And when you're done, you're going to hit your OK button. So notice the difference now. I'll just zoom in so you can see a little bit better what uh, I've done. So watch down here on his skin if I shut my layer off and layer back on, off and on. Now watch his eye, same thing. It's open and now it's just closed ever so slightly. Open, closed ever so slightly. Um, so make sure you do zoom out because you'll know if you've gone too far. Off and on and off and on. Uh, so that is George. Now to save George, a couple of things. File. You can save this as a PSD file. And so when you save it as a PSD, just browse into whatever folder you're saving to on your device and go ahead and you might want to call this George Dunn. Okay. So I would put mine here. I'm going to call it George Dunn.
takes a minute. And now we can also save it out uh, as a high res and a low res for handing into your website. I'm not going to get you to hand George into your website. Uh, this photo is courtesy of uh, Photoshop Cafe DVDs. They're a set of portrait editing DVDs that I bought a few years back. And so we don't wanna repost this photo of George. So instead, I'm going to get you to hand George in to the hand-ins drive, and I will give you further instructions on how to do that. I uh, know that this, if it was a photo of yours, you could place your watermark on it. So you could say file open in place and you can go put your watermark on it. And then once you had it watermarked, you could also say export as a JPEG. And in that case, you could save it as a high res and a low res so that you would have your high res before you watermark it and your low res after you watermark it. So that's George. Go ahead, do your saving, pause this video and get Norma open. And then I'll show you how to do Norma here right away as well. Okay, so if you've got your uh, photo of Norma open, same thing as before with George, we're gonna duplicate that background. Once we've got the background duplicated, go into filter, choose liquify. We will do the same thing as far as liquefying on Norma's skin that's on her neck. And so again, make sure you've got a large brush so that when you are liquefying that, you are bringing things, I'm on the wrong tool, you're bringing things up and up and up and up. And I gotta get a bit smaller brush here to work on this jowl a bit. And we're gonna bring that up. And notice how I'm not giving her any kind of ripples on her skin, I'm just bringing these up. I could do a little bit here as well, bring it up, bring your skin up and up and up. And we're going to do something fun with Norma. I'm going to show you the twirl tool. So the twirl tool is uh, this one right here. Twirl. And we can twirl her hair. So again, a bigger brush. Watch what happens. I'm going to click and hold and her hair is twirling. And I'm going to click and hold and her hair is twirling. And over here I can twirl it the other direction by holding down alt and I can twirl her hair. And so we can give her a few little poofs in her hair. And then I can maybe just bring that hair up a little bit. It's a little thin right there. So I'm just going to bring that up and then I'll go back and I'll give her a little twirl in that spot just to give her a little bit of curl going on. I can have a smaller brush and then it'll just get little pieces of it in there. Isn't that fun how we can do that kind of stuff? So go ahead, do some twirling, bring Norma's skin up when you're done, say okay. You can save this out again as a PSD file, save it to your device, and then I'm going to get you to hand that into our hand-ins folder uh, because this, again, it was a photo that was provided by Photoshop Cafe DVDs that I purchased a few years ago, and so we're not going to repost this photo, and uh, I'll get you to hand it in to me separately just through our Google Drives.